Hey y'all, you won't believe whose house I'm walking out of. I'm actually walking out of the childhood home of our president, Jimmy Carter. I'm here in Plains today to sit down and have a chat with the president. I wanna find out about some of his childhood memories, his favorite foods and all about his town. So y'all please stay with me. I promise you it's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful time with one of the greatest men of our times. So y'all please come with me. I've got the most spectacular day planned for us. We're going to see President Jimmy Carter, and I'm going to do the breakfast, because like any Southern girl, you know I can't go empty-handed, so i got to have something in the way of food to take to him. So I have decided, I thought and thought and thought, and I said, well, sweet rolls really go with a bed and breakfast. So I thought, well, I'll make him some of my Gorilla Bread, and it's so simple and easy. We're going to start with canned biscuits. And before we open our biscuits, I'm going to get a stick of butter melting and a cup of brown sugar. And before I open the biscuits, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm actually going to cut this cream cheese into 20 cubes. And I always have to stop and think about this one. All right, because 5 times 4 is 20, so I'm going to go down the center and I'm going to get four rows out of this. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five cuts out of that. So that will give us 20 squares because we have 20 biscuits. And we want a piece of cream cheese for each biscuit that we have. All right, and I'm going to give this a quick stir. All we need to do is just really get that brown sugar melted into that butter. While I'm working over here, that'll finish melting. And now I'm gonna open our can of biscuits. I'll never forget the day I was on Ready, Set, Cook. And I was, go <laughs> I was going up against a French chef and I looked over at him and he was just working like crazy with a can opener and a can of biscuits. And I looked over him and I started hollering, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. And he wouldn't listen to me because he thought naturally I was trying to lead him astray. Well, about that time, they exploded in his face, and I just died laughing. I thought everybody knew how to open a can biscuit. All right, now I'm going to take our biscuits, and I'll do one can at the time. I'm going to spray our bunt pan, and this is a Teflon coated, but I'm going to put just a little bit of spray in there. And I'm going to sprinkle some walnuts evenly around the bottom. Now you can use any kind of nuts you want, but I either like pecans or walnuts. Now I'm gonna take each one of these biscuits and I'm gonna flatten them out a little bit and I'm gonna cut me a chunk of cream cheese and put it inside that biscuit. <laughs> Doesn't that sound heavenly? And I'm going to mix some sugar and some cinnamon together and just stir that up. Take the biscuit, and I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of the cinnamon sugar mixture in there. And then I'm just going to seal that biscuit up real good and then place it in my bunt pan. And I'm going to do that until every one of the biscuits have been done. You'll want to make sure that you use like a 10 count tube of biscuits. And you'll want to make sure that you use a quality biscuit. These are not expensive, so you don't want to skimp on that. I'm so excited about visiting this man. I have been so fortunate in my life. Even though this visit hasn't happened yet, I'm literally just hours away from it happening. Our butter and our brown sugar is separated a little, so I'm just giving it a few stirs to kind of incorporate that butter back into that brown sugar. All right, now I'm going to sprinkle some of our brown sugar and cinnamon over that 
And then I'm gonna take our butter mixture and drizzle those biscuits. And this is gonna make like a, have you ever had a sticky bun? It's gonna be something like that. You know, with the kind of rich caramelly sauce on top. So we're gonna do about half of that onto that first layer. And then I'm gonna take a few more nuts and sprinkle over that layer. And I'm gonna place the rest of the biscuits that I have done on top of those. Doesn't that look good? Biscuits and cream cheese. I don't believe it can get any better. All right, here we go again with the last of the brown sugar and butter. Making sure that gets on every biscuit. And I love eating this while it's still warm out of the oven. But if you can't get it straight out of the oven, you can pop this bread into your microwave and it's just as good. All right, now we're gonna take the remainder of our cinnamon sugar and just sprinkle over those last 10 biscuits. The cinnamon smell is terrific. Then we're gonna take the last of our nuts and pour over in there. And we're really gonna have one great big fat sticky bun. So we're gonna put this in our oven and we're gonna bake it for about 50 to 60 minutes. And I should have one over here that's ready. Oh, look. This is a presidential sticky bun. Who would have thought some little South Georgia girl would be making something for President Jimmy Carter? Blows my mind. I hope he loves it, but I think he will. I understand that he can have a little bit of a sweet tooth. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna invert it onto my plate. And with any luck, it'll come out. <laughs> I heard a clunk. That's a good sign. Y'all ready for the unveiling? How does it look? Does that look okay? <gasps> I think he's gonna just love it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to go see Mr. Jimmy, because we don't want to keep a president waiting, do we? Welcome back, y'all. I'm actually standing in the personal pecan grove of Miss Lillian Carter. Miss Lillian was President Jimmy Carter's mother. She actually harvested the nuts off of these trees to help feed and clothe and educate her children. And you know, I happen to know that one of President Carter's favorite foods is pecans. So I have cooked him up something extra special to serve him up today. Well, we've got our gooey and gorgeous gorilla bread and these hot fresh scones to take to President Carter. And do you know he still lives in the small town he was born in? Plains, Georgia, which is actually just a few miles down the road from my hometown of Albany. And you know, I've visited it many times, but I've never seen such a beautiful bed and breakfast as the one Mr. Carter helped build on the main street. And true to his character, he actually constructed it along with other volunteers. In fact, this bed in the presidential suite was built by President Carter's very own hands. His wife, Rosalind, supervised the different decor in the period-themed rooms. And the generosity of workers and sponsors has created a historic gem well worth visiting. But you know, I wanted to catch up with my own favorite president about some of his own history and that of the town he loves so much. What store are we standing in front of? Well, when my father had a warehouse here, a business, an insurance business, so when I came home from the Navy, this is my first office. And so I lived here until, I guess, about seven or eight years and then finally built another office building. But this was original Carter's Warehouse. And this was a, a grocery store. And uh, my uncle, Alton, my daddy's brother, had a grocery store down here, and so did my father, by the way. And so all of these uh, 
op were very wide open operating mm -hmm. on Saturday night in particular because folks didn't have automobiles to ride around in or pickup trucks. Then they rode in wagons or either walked. So once a week they would come to Plains. This, by the way, was a bank building. It was built in 1901, as were most of this, <laughs> most of the uh, places along the way. And so uh, we've converted the bank building into the old bank cafe. And I've eaten here before. It's a good place to eat. It's a good place to eat. We have a couple of really good restaurants in town. And then this next store here was my uncle's uh, Plains Mercantile Company. And uh, sometimes on Saturdays, and particularly during the Christmas holidays, I worked in this store. Yes, sir. They had a wonderful uh, store upstairs for women's goods, where men couldn't even go upstairs. <laughs> Well, they had un Not allowed. they had unmentionables up there. You know, like slips and stuff. Oh like well, that. I, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have said those words back in those days. And they had a whole a bunch of uh, of mannequins up there, and they would put the latest uh, women's styles on the man mannequins. And, and ladies would come from all around this part of the uh, state to shop here and and for their foundations. Yeah, and, and my uncle and for the foundations and other things. <laughs> and my. Uh, Uncles would send his buyer up to uh, New York City every year, twice a year, in the spring to buy fall fashions and in the fall to buy spring fashions. So latest styles <laughs> here in Plains. But this was a good mercantile store. It had everything in it that you can imagine. But as much as I enjoyed learning about the president's family and hometown, you know, as a southerner myself, I've always been curious as to why he stayed so close to home. Well, first of all, this is where my family's been since 1860. It's where Rosen's family's been since 1833 when the Indians left. So our land is here. Uh, our churches are here. Uh, our family still lives here. The only home we've ever owned is here in Plains. A and we are where we belong to be. It's just uh, a matter of a ha haven that Rosen and I have always chosen without argument, I might say. Something else that just fascinated me is, is your business mind. Uh, it, it started when you were four, as early as four years old, didn't it? Yeah. The, the biggest thing that amazed me, though, was at eight years old, you became a property owner. Yes, I, I owned uh, five houses when I was eight years old. Eight years but old. But I had saved up a dollar a day all during the entire peanut season every year for four years. And I, and I had enough money when cotton got down to five cents a pound, the lowest price it ever got in the United States, uh, I had enough money to buy five bales of cotton. And I put it in one of my daddy's storehouses and when it got up to 18 cents a pound, we sold it, made a big profit. And the undertaker in Plains who, who owned part of the building where the inn is now, uh, he had died and so I bought five houses from him. And so the total rent on my houses was eighteen dollars and a half for five houses. The total rent was eighteen fifty. <laughs> two of them rented for two dollars, and the biggest ones for five dollars. And when I went off to be in the Navy to the Naval Academy, I was still collecting eight dollars, eighteen dollars and a half rent. So I was an entrepreneur and a property owner as a little boy. That, that's amazing because you know, at eight, I don't think I had learned to tie my shoes yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I desperately wanted to ask Mr. Jimmy, as he prefers to be known around his hometown, what his food memories were growing up in Plains. Well, my favorite memory was our Sunday meals when we always had either chicken pie or fried chicken, plus uh, mashed potatoes and uh, rice and gravy and hot biscuits with butter. And then uh, we generally had the you know, vegetables of that time, collard greens, turnip greens, black-eyed peas, butter beans, sweet corn. And then we almost always had uh, banana pudding or strawberry <laughs> shortcake for a dessert. <laughs> Just a few simple things like that. And one of my favorite desserts, really, because I ate it at the end of the meal because it was so precious, was uh, cornbread. Uh, crumbled up in buttermilk and eaten with a spoon. That is so good. Well, I, I have a few things I, I, that I have made oh, really? for you to taste if you would ag agree to it. And I hope you love them. Can we walk across the street? I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Would be delighted. Hurry back because I can't wait to show you how President Carter enjoyed my Gorilla Bread. And then he had a surprise for me. Welcome back, y'all, to one of the best days of my life. 
I was so proud to spend time with a man that I admired so much. And as you can imagine, I was excited about him tasting my food. But I did worry that the scones and the gorilla bread that looked so good in my kitchen may be a little too humble for this occasion. But as y'all will see, it appears my favorite president has an appetite as big as his heart. What you want to taste first? Well, I think, I, well, how about one of, I'll take a, a bite of the scone. Did I just get one? Yes, or just get one, and I don't know that, I brought you some straw, oh, here's the strawberry figs for you to taste it with. I made oh, these, really? I made these week before last off of my fig tree. And oh, let's wow. see if I can, there you and, go. Um, There's your fork. Right. You know, scones are, they're a little different from our biscuits, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I know. Yeah. To me, they're more drier and you need something mm -hmm. good and wet. Good. Well, that you do. Try. All right, no. look at him lick that, that that's the way no. I eat. No. <laughs> the gorilla bread is so good. You cooked this? Yes, sir, I made this just oh, for see. you. This may be a little messy because it's been traveling. All right, that looks beautiful. Mmm, you all right. <laughs> it's oh. a gorilla, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I just love it. Georgia pecans in it. Yes, sir. That is great. I was just so happy that Mr. Jimmy liked my Gorilla Bread and Scones, but now he has a surprise for me. Yes, that's right. Mr. Carter wanted to introduce me to his favorite cook and local celebrity, Maggie Crimes. Her homestyle restaurant has fed Mr. Carter and his family for years. So when you come back, we'll learn a little bit about pleasing the presidential palate. Welcome back to my great day in Plains with President Jimmy Carter, who was kind enough to ask his friend and favorite cook, Maggie Crimes, to share some of her legendary fried chicken with us. And this isn't just any old chicken. It's Mr. Jimmy's lifelong favorite. Paul is a great cook, but... Uh-oh! <laughs> in Plains, nobody uh -oh. can compete with you. <laughs> I be in trouble here. No, you're not in trouble. I've heard about you, dear. I've, Is that right? Yes, ma'am, I have heard about you and your food through not just Mr. Jimmy, but other folks other here in people. town. Okay. And it's all been good. Thank you. Well, so I, you got some secrets to tell me. No, ma'am. The only <laughs> thing I got to say is just oh, season good. Absolutely. And, yes. and that's where you get the taste from. And you, you know what I think, Mom? Uh -huh. That Southerners use that makes it so good. Tremendous amount of love. Yes. I know that you have put your heart into that place. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Everything that I fix, I want to make sure it tastes right. And if it tastes right to me, then it should taste right to you. You want to buy the chicken? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I'll save you some. A lot of places this I have. This is my favorite part. Wow. Chicken. A lot of places no I have uh, been out to eat. And what the trouble with the food, they cut short on seasoning. Mm -hmm. You know, you have seasoned food to the taste, to make it taste right. You know, I, I think the only thing that we differ on, which surprises me, is uh, I think I just lost my piece of pecan uh -oh. pie. <laughs> I'm going Well, you have to share it with our <laughs> I say pecan, y'all say pe pe pecan. Well, though, that's all the same There thing. are four different ways to pronounce that delicious nut. Pecan. Yeah. Pecan, pecan, and pecan. That's right. So you put the accent on different mm -hmm. syllables and you pronounce it Anna. But even when you it's go wonderful. to a, No matter what you call it, it's wonderful. Even when you go to a, an international uh, convention about pecans, they pronounce it four different ways. Right? And I sometimes change the way I pronounce it. Well, I want to thank y'all so much. I, I hope that one day I'll have grandchildren to be able to tell this story to. Well, if it's okay. not, you can show them the film. It's, <laughs> you, you mean so much to so many people. Well, That's the truth. Thank you very uh, much. We all love you so much. Well, the, one of the best things about Plains, Georgia, is not only the love that exists, but also having Maggie crying here. Oh, well, <laughs> you know why don't you cook? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know and you I make him food. feel good from the inside out, girl. Right. And it makes me feel good, too. And let me tell you this little story. He don't come regular enough. Sometimes I think about going to his house. <laughs> yeah, I get shot. But you know what? Maggie wants his for us to eat every meal, though. So. <laughs> you know what? Mr. Jimmy, if you ate every meal there, you might not could get in your car. That's <laughs> true, I know. All with you. All oh. with me. Well, this has been great. I had so much fun visiting with President Jimmy Carter and his adorable hometown of Plains, Georgia. The bed and breakfast was just perfect. It was an honor to cook up some goodies for him, and I was so excited that I got to meet his favorite cook, Maggie. Her homestyle cooking was incredible. I want to thank y'all so much for spending time with me today, along with President Carter. It was a very humbling experience for me to be with such a great man. So from Plains, Georgia, we wish y'all best dishes from our place to yours. <laughs>